Shane, what did I tell you about leaving your shoes in the middle of the hallway? My mom almost tripped over them today. I swear, you get stupider every day. I didn't leave my shoes in the hallway. I put them in the shoe rack like always, so I don't appreciate you accusing me of something I've not done, especially in such a harsh way. Well, that's not true in the slightest. I know you left them in the way because my mother told me that you did. Your mother would tell you anything so long as it would get me in trouble. That woman hates me. That woman has a name, and she's my mom, so show her some respect. I'll show her some respect when she decides to show me some. What do you mean by that? Well, it's just that we've let your mom come and live with us, which, you know, I have no problem with, especially after your dad died. She needed to be with people who could help her and just keep her company. But ever since she moved in with us, you've become so vile to me. You and her always gang up on me and try to make me feel like I'm less than you. Your mom is constantly muttering and calling me all sorts of things when you're not here. Considering I'm letting her stay in our house, the least she could do is be civil with me, even if she doesn't particularly like me. My mother is nothing but cordial with you. She always makes sure to talk to you whenever she sees you. Not to mention she does more housework than you do. What? No, she doesn't. Oh, please. She's told me all about how you'll just make a mess and leave it where it is. You don't clean the dishes, you don't do any laundry, and you certainly don't pick up after yourself in terms of rubbish. You just leave it strewn about the house like it's your own personal dump. And you can't deny it because I've seen the evidence myself. Just the other day, when I came home from work, I saw all of the beer cans strewn in the living room. My mom doesn't drink beer, so I knew it couldn't have been her. Instead, it was you, a slob of a person who I had to clean up after like a child. Julie, I promise you that wasn't me. I don't drink during the day. In fact, I hardly drink at all nowadays. Well, I know my mom doesn't drink beer, so who else could it have been? A ghost? Well, with how your mom seems to have it out for me, she simply could have gone and bought the drinks and simply poured the liquid away and left the cans to make it look like I had had them. Are you seriously calling my mom a liar? Do you really think she'd go through that much effort just to make you look bad? She really doesn't care about you that much. Wow, thanks. Nice to know that my wife's mother doesn't even care enough about me to even dislike me. Makes me feel real good. Well, if you weren't such a loser, then maybe she'd be more interested in you. What do you mean by that? I'm not a loser. Oh, please. You've been out of a job for how long now? I'm the only one earning in this house, and I'm okay with covering for my mom. She's gone through a lot lately. But it's just pathetic that you've not managed to get another job yet. And frankly, I'm getting quite tired of covering for you. Whoa, well, this is the first that I'm hearing about this. Why haven't you told me how you felt before? I told you that if me being unemployed started getting to you, that... You need to talk to me about it and we can figure something out together. I shouldn't have to have that kind of conversation with you to begin with. Being an adult, you should have a job and should be helping me pay the bills and the rent. But instead, you just had to go and get yourself fired. It's not like I went and got myself fired on purpose. The company made it untenable for me to work there. Well then, you shouldn't have made a huge fuss out of such a small thing, should you? Julie, they broke several health and safety laws which put not only my own life at risk, but the lives of my co-workers as well. I wasn't about to sit back and let them get away with it. So you had to go and get the higher-ups involved? Lawyers? Yes, it was the only way that I could get anyone to take notice is when I tried to complain directly to my managers, they just brushed me off and told me to either get back to work or leave. I wasn't about to stick around in a place that would rather I potentially fatally injure myself simply so that they could save a couple of dollars on safety equipment. Unless you would have rather I died at that job? Well, you did have insurance, which would have been more than you're bringing into the house at the moment. Are you seriously saying that you'd rather I have died instead of losing my job? Oh, you're just trying to twist my words around. I never said that and you know it. I just merely meant that it would be nice if you were earning a bit of money. There's no need to get so worked up over it. Uh-huh, sure you did. Well, I'm gonna go. I have things to do and, to be honest, if I don't leave now, I might end up saying something that I'll regret in the future, so... Goodbye for now, and I'll talk to you later. Oh, don't be such a girl. I didn't even say anything that bad. You'd feel the same way if the roles were reversed. No, I really wouldn't. I would never wish for my wife to have a fatal accident at work simply so I could get her life insurance or whatever. In fact, it would never have even crossed my mind. But I guess that's just because I'm a better person than you. You're not better than me. Not by a long shot. I'm the one earning money here, so I'm better than you. Money isn't everything, you know. Anyway, I'm going. I won't be responding to any more texts for a while, so we'll just have to talk at home. Fine. If you want to be that way, then so be it. I'll see you at home. 
Julie, dear, I know that you're most likely busy at the moment, but I simply couldn't not say anything. Mom, what is it? Is everything okay? Are you okay? Oh, yes, dear, I'm fine, but I can't say the same for you and Shane, I'm afraid. Huh? What do you mean by that? Well, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but I think Shane's having an affair. What? No, that can't be possible. He's too much of a loser for another woman to be interested in him. What's made you think this, anyway? Well, the fact that a young woman came by the house and then they both left together in the same car kind of made me suspect something. But if you think nothing's going on, then I'll just leave you to it. Hang on, he got in a car with another woman? What did she look like? She was young, probably in her 20s by the looks of things, and she was dressed in a black skirt and a white top. She also had brown hair and she wasn't entirely unfortunate looking. So what you're telling me is that she was pretty? I guess you could say that. Right. That's it. He is not going to know what hit him when I'm through with him. I'll give him a piece of my mind, too. Shane, you better answer me right now. I know what you've been doing. How you've been going behind my daughter's back and cheating on her with some tart. How dare you do that to her? Amy, what are you going on about now? Are you trying to accuse me of something else that I've not done? I'm accusing you of something that I know you've done for certain. I saw you leave with that woman. You can't deny it. I know that you snuck away so that you could cheat on my daughter with her. I knew that a loser such as yourself was no good for my sweet girl. I told her when she first met you that you were a pathetic, good for nothing, and that you would never be good enough for her. That you wouldn't be able to provide her with the life she deserves. And I was right. Well, just you wait. She knows all about your little trust with this random tart. And she is not happy at all. Are you quite done? Well, how rude. Amy, I'm going to tell you this once and only once, so please listen carefully. I know that might be hard for you as you seem to like only believing the narrative you want to believe, but I mean 100% honest when I say that I am not and never would I ever cheat on Julie. Oh please, of course you'd say that. You just don't want to admit when you've been caught. You're even so pathetic that you can't even hide an affair properly. But it doesn't matter, because now that we've got proof of you cheating, my Julie can simply take you to court and take you for all that you're worth. I know it's not much, as you're such a pathetic loser and all, but I'm going to make sure that you're left with absolutely nothing, not even the clothes on your back. By the time that we're done with you, you'll be on the streets with nothing to your name, not a single penny. Seriously? You're going to try and make my life unbearable over something that isn't even true? I've been looking for an excuse to get rid of you, and I finally found one. Now my daughter will be able to marry an actual decent man who makes a good living and can give her everything she wants. Not some stupid idiot who'd rather yell at his bosses instead of just doing what he's told. So you think I would have done nothing as well? Well, it wouldn't have been the smart thing to do, although you're not smart, are you? You're just some poor, pathetic loser who doesn't really deserve anything nice in life, in my opinion. Especially considering you're just letting my daughter earn all of the money whilst you sit around doing nothing all day. That's not true. I'm actively trying to find a new job, and I have been since I was technically fired. However, it's not easy as no one is looking to hire at the minute. It's not like I can just go and demand someone to give me a job. A real man would. They'd walk into a shop and demand that someone hire them. Whatever, Amy. I'm done talking with you. In fact, if you're so bothered about Julie and her money, why don't you get a job and help us out with the rent and bills, huh? Because at the moment, you just mooch off of us. You don't pay any bills or rent. You eat all your food, and you don't even help with the household chores. You just leave a mess anywhere you go and expect me to clean up after you. I shouldn't have to get a job. I'm older than you. You need to support me, not the other way around. You keep thinking that. Anyway, I'm gonna go. I really don't want to be talking about this again with my wife's mother. You can't run from the truth. You're cheating on my daughter, and you'll face the consequences for it. You know what? Fine. Do your worst. Oh, I will. Julie, you need to tell your mom to mind her own business. I'm trying to do something important here, and I've got her messaging me, accusing me of cheating on you, and claiming that you and her are going to take me to court over it. Yeah, well, maybe you shouldn't cheat on me then, should you? I'm not cheating on you! My mom told me what she saw, and I'm more inclined to believe the woman who's raised me and looked after me than the man who can't even be bothered to get a job. Oh, for- Fine. You want to take me to court over something untrue, baseless, and something you have no evidence for? And that's up to you, but when you lose, don't come crying to me. Oh, and I think it goes without saying that I will definitely be wanting a divorce. Fine by me. 
I don't want to be married to a poor loser anyway. Fine. Um, Shane, what the hell have you done? Why is all of mine and my mom's stuff out on the sidewalk? Why isn't it in the house? Oh, well, that's because I've kicked you out. Huh? What do you mean you've kicked us out? You can't do that. Actually, I think you'll find that I can. You see, the house is in my name, so I can decide who gets to live in it and who doesn't. And considering that you and your mother have both been nothing but vile to me since she moved in, I don't see why I should let either of you stay when I don't have to anymore. But it's my home too. You can't just kick me out. Too bad, because that's what I'm doing. You and your mom can go wherever you want to go, so long as it isn't my home. But we have nowhere to go. Maybe you should have thought about that before you acted so horribly to me. Well, fine then. I'll have that house before you know it anyway, when we go to court for our divorce. Then I'll be checking you out. Okay, I mean, you can try, but I think you'll be sorely disappointed. I don't think I will be. I know what I'm doing. If you say so. What was that? I mean, what just happened? Shane? Hmm? Oh, that. Well, I just won our divorce, like I told you I would. But how? I was the one who was cheated on. I should be the one to get compensation and to live in the house, not you. Except, like I've told you a hundred times, and so did the judge, I didn't cheat on you. Then who was that woman, huh? She's my union representative who's handling my case against my former bosses and job as they're trying to get away with legal practices. In fact, I've just settled up with that company thanks to Megan, and let me tell you, I've not been shortchanged in my compensation, in my settlement. What do you mean? They've paid you a lot of money? A lot. It turns out that the company was under investigation for illegal practices before I even made a complaint. It turned out that my incident was the last straw, and the company has had to get rid of their entire upper management and pay a bunch of fines or face being closed down. My settlement will be in the range of five figures. I've also been offered a job as a lead engineer at a very respectable company, which pays a lot of money. So I think it's safe to say that my luck has definitely turned around. Maybe you and your mom were just bad luck charms. Well, that's not fair. You need to share. I deserve to have half of that. You're my husband. Not as of 10.30 this morning. I'm free now and I'm more than happy to be on my own. With how you and your mom treated me, I know that my life will be better from now on. No, wait. Surely we can work something out. Not in your life. I'm finally free of you two, and I know that I deserve better than how you treated me. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find someone who treats me with the respect, care, and love that I deserve. But now that you have money, I will treat you better. It's just because you were poor that I was getting annoyed at you. Being the man, you should really be the one to make the money. Well, the fact that you wouldn't even support me in my time of need really shows just how horrible you are. It's good to know that our wedding vows meant nothing to you. They don't really mean in richness or for poorness. That's just a token thing, they say. It's not token to people who actually love each other, but that's not us anymore, and I'm okay with that. I'll find someone who loves me for me instead of the money that I can earn. Goodbye, Julie. Shane, wait. Don't do this to me. It's not fair. Shane! After our divorce was finalized, I officially kicked Julie and her mom out of my house. I did have to give her a percentage of what I owned, but because I didn't get my payout from the company until after our divorce went through, I didn't have to pay her a single penny of it. My new job is going really well as well. I've made some good friends with my coworkers, and the environment is much better than my old job. People actually look out for one another, and the company doesn't try to cut corners and make things dangerous for their employees. As for Julie and her mother... The last I heard was that they had moved into a little apartment together, and Amy still hasn't got a job, meaning that Julie has to pay for everything herself. They've got into a lot of arguments because of that, but they're not my problem now, and I'm happy with how my life has turned out. It just goes to show that standing up for what you believe in will pay off in the long run. Don't let your workplace bully you about because you are much more important than a job. Hey, Mom. You know that really nice swimsuit you bought not too long ago? The green one with the black stripes? Hey, sweetie. Yeah, what about it? Where is it? I think it's in one of my drawers in the bedroom. How come? I'm going swimming and wanted to borrow it, but I've looked in your drawers and couldn't find it. Oh, it might be in one of the bags we took on holiday. 
I never wore it because it was tipping it down the entire time. Do you remember? LOL. Haha, <laughs> yeah. Who are you going swimming with, anyway? Just some friends. Found it. Okay, well, have fun. I will. See you later. See you later, sweetie. Hey, honey, I'm just about to leave work. Do we need anything from the shops? Actually, could you pick me up some sunscreen and some mini travel toiletries? Huh? What do you need that stuff for? I just like to have them in stock before the summer comes and everyone else buys up all the good ones. I used my last ones on our last holiday. Oh, okay, sure. I'll grab you some then. Thanks. See you soon, then. See you soon, hun. Hey, Vicky, you free? Hey, Ange. Yeah, I'm always free if you need to chat. What's wrong? It's just that Alex and Natasha have been acting really weird lately, and it's kind of getting me a little bit worried. What have they been doing? Well, first, Natasha asked if she could borrow my new swimsuit to go swimming the other day, but when I asked how it was, she said that they didn't actually go. I then asked if she could make sure to put my swimming costume back in my drawer, as I really liked that one, and she said that she'd lost it. Then, Alex asked me to grab him some sunscreen and some mini toiletries. What's so weird about that? We've not got a holiday booked anytime soon. So why would he need them? He's got his regular stuff at home. Huh, I see your point. That is kind of weird. Are you sure that maybe they're not going to try and surprise you with a holiday somewhere? I don't think so. There's no way we can afford another holiday at the minute. We're really low on money and trying to save up for Natasha's 18th. Huh, that is kind of strange then. Maybe have a look on Alex's computer to see if he's booked anything. Isn't that kind of wrong, though? Like, an invasion of privacy? I guess, but what if he's doing something worse, though? What? Like, cheating, you mean? Well, maybe. You won't know unless you check. Jeez, way to make me nervous. Look, just trust me on it. Have a quick look, and if nothing's going on, then you don't need to say anything. At least you'll have peace of mind, then. I suppose. Okay, and let me know if you find anything. I'm here to help, you know. Thanks, Vic. Vic, I need to talk to you. What's up, Ange? Did you do what I suggested? Yeah, I had a look and you won't believe what I found. What is it? He's not having an affair, is he? No. But he has gone and booked a holiday. Unbelievably. That's a good thing though, isn't it? Well, it's a nice thought, but there's no way we can afford it. Plus, he's only booked it for two people, so Natasha's going to feel left out. That must be why Natasha was asking about my new swimming costume. She's trying to pack my things for me secretly, so that I don't find out about the trip. That's really sweet. I wish my husband would book a secret holiday. You're quite lucky. Yeah, I mean, it's really nice of him to do that, but with Natasha's birthday coming up, it would feel wrong to go without her. I want all of us to spend as much time together as possible before she goes off to college. I know I won't get to spend so much time with her then. Well, why not mention it to Alex then? You could just say that you saw the booking when you went to use the computer and ask if you could add Tash on it too. That could be your present to her. That's actually not a bad idea. I might go and do that. Good. And don't forget to bring me back a gift. Yeah, yeah. One rock coming your way. Cheapskate. Anyway, off to talk to Alex. Send him my love. Will do. Talk to you later. Hey, honey, are you free? I've got a few minutes before I need to get back to work. What's up? Look, I know you're probably going to be a little bit annoyed, 
but I got worried because you and Natasha were acting kind of weird. So I decided to look on your computer and I saw that you had booked tickets for a holiday. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry that I looked, but I think it's really sweet that you wanted to book a holiday for just the two of us. The only problem is, I wouldn't feel right leaving Natasha on her own at home, so close to her birthday. So I thought that maybe we could add a third person to the trip so that Natasha could come with us. It could be her birthday present from the both of us. About that. What's wrong? Look, I booked a trip just for me and Natasha. What? Yeah, I just thought of with her going away to college soon, I would like to spend a bit of time with her and... He's always wanted to go to Italy, so we decided to book the trip for the two of us. We didn't ask you because you know we're a bit tight on money right now, and adding a third person to the trip just would have been too expensive. Plus, you're not on your best behavior on holiday. You kind of nag all the time and won't let us do stuff because they're too dangerous. We didn't really want to be held back and we might want to go like scuba diving or something crazy like that. You understand, right? Besides, you wouldn't have enjoyed it anyway. Well, no, I don't understand really. I'm your wife and Natasha's mom, and you're saying you couldn't be bothered to invite me on the little trip because you think that I nag you too much? That I'm not fun enough to be around? It's nothing personal, it's just the way you are. Sometimes Tash and I need someone to rein us in and bring us down, and other times we want to have fun and... Do something crazy. You just don't fit in with that second one. Thanks for that. Don't make me feel awful at all. It's not my fault if you're upset. Maybe work on yourself or something so that you can actually join in instead of sitting on the sidelines and trying to stop us from having fun. We're fed up with not doing things simply because you don't want to. I don't do that. If you and Natasha want to do something, I'm supportive. I enjoy watching from the side and cheering you on. In fact, I thought that was one of the best things that we did as a family. Apparently though, you and your daughter feel differently. So differently, in fact, that you're happy to go on holiday and leave me all alone at home. Were you even going to tell me what you were doing? Or where you were going? Obviously we'd have told you at some point. Oh wow, thanks. I don't get why you're being so upset about this. You're the one who said we didn't have enough money for a family trip. That doesn't mean go and book one without including me. Well, there's nothing we can do about it now. You're just gonna have to deal with it. We'll bring you a gift back. You know what? Don't bother. I've tried so hard to make sure that this family is happy and healthy. I do all of the household chores. I work full time and I took care of Natasha so much when she was younger. And what do I get in return? My husband and daughter are telling me that they're bored of me and don't want me to join them on their trip. Yeah, but you're also bossy. You're constantly nagging Tasha to get a job and stuff. To help get her ready for the real world, and so that she can have some spending money of her own and doesn't have to rely on us all of the time? I mean, what's she going to do when she goes off to college? She'll need some money to survive. See? This is exactly what I'm on about. No one wants to deal with that every day, especially on holiday. We both just need a little time away from you to relax and have some fun. I'm sure you feel the same way about us too. Actually, I don't. Funnily enough, I like spending time with my family. At least I did until I discovered my family hated me. Don't be so dramatic. Look, holidays in a couple of weeks. When we get back, we can all do something as a family. Maybe watch a film together or something? Oh wow, I can hardly wait. Whatever. I need to get back to work. I'll talk to you later. Uh-huh, fine. Hey, sweetie. We're almost back home. About five minutes away. Could you put the kettle on for us? We're exhausted. Oh, I can't wait to tell you all about this trip. It was amazing. Honestly, it was the best holiday me and Tash have ever been on. You should have been there. You'd have loved it. Well, I would have been there, but you and Natasha decided that you would rather I wasn't involved. So, what can you do? 
Oh, don't be like that. I don't want you to ruin the joy we're feeling at the moment. Please give us a little bit of time before you drag us down, okay? Take all the time you need. I won't be there to drag anyone down. Huh? What are you on about? Hang on. Where's all our things? Angela, have we been robbed? No, we haven't been robbed. Then where's all our stuff? The sofa and the TV and everything. It's all gone. Funny how you notice those things missing, but not the fact that all of my stuff specifically has gone as well. What's going on? If you're trying to get back at me for the holiday, it's not funny. You're a grown adult. You can't act like a spoiled rat. You're right. I am an adult, so I have every right to decide to leave. What? You heard me. I'm fed up with dealing with you and your selfish ways. A trait that you've passed on to our daughter as well by the looks of it. I'm an actual person too, you know. I have feelings and emotions, which you and Natasha utterly destroyed when you decided that I wasn't fun enough or cool enough or whatever to go on holiday with. That really hurt me. It made me think, why on earth am I still hanging around like a maid told to clean up after her employers? I deserve to have my own life too. I don't understand. I've left you, Alex. It's not that hard a concept to grasp. You can't just leave. What about Natasha? She's your daughter. She's also an adult now. One who is going off to college soon and should know how to treat people kindly. She's welcome to come and visit me if she'd like, but I'm done being her bank account. She needs to start acting like an adult and start to do things for herself. And what about me? What about you? You've taken everything with you. How am I supposed to live now? I've not taken everything with me, only the things that I bought. It's not my fault if you never helped out around the house or bought things for it. You are being so unfair. No, I'm not. I'm just done being your maid. You're going to have to start taking care of things for yourself now, because I'm not going to do it for you anymore. In fact, I think I'm going to go on a little holiday to celebrate my new independence and freedom from such a selfish and heartless husband. I hear Greece is lovely this time of year. Goodbye, Alex. Have a nice life full of doing whatever you want, regardless of anyone else's feelings. I hope it was worth it to lose your wife over. You didn't wait for me, so I'm done waiting for you. After I left Alex, I bought my own little apartment. Natasha came to visit me after a couple of weeks and apologized for her behavior and for ditching me. I explained how it made me feel, and she was instantly regretful of her actions. In fact, she has even started looking for jobs to help herself financially at college. She agreed that it was time she stopped being so selfish and started acting like the adult she is. Thankfully, our relationship is really picking up. As for Alex, the last I heard was that he finally came to understand how much stress I was under, as he has had to learn how to do his own bills, the household chores, and work a full-time job. Hopefully, he'll actually respect the next woman he gets into a relationship with.